good morning and a welcome to you, the family and the friends of Eileen Margaret Wern. Welcome to this service of Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving in which we are celebrating her life and her faith. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Cameron Weber. I'm the pastor of the Community Church uh, here, and uh, that's the church of which uh, Eileen was a part um, for well, over 30 years here and, and certainly longer in the, in the region, starting out at Toowoomba, of course. Uh, nine years ago, of course, she moved away to be closer to family and to, to get the extra care she needed at that time. So welcome to you all, particularly those who've travelled to be here uh, and locals as well. As we come and we bid Eileen our final and fond farewell. And no doubt at a time like this, our emotions are somewhat mixed, aren't they? There's that sadness. We have a deep sense of sadness at the, the loss that we feel. But at the same time, we are thankful. Thankful for a life shared with Eileen. And even amidst that sadness, there's joy as we remember good times that we shared with her. And so as we meet today and throughout this day, our tears of sadness will mingle with uh, tears of happiness. And so it is good that we can be together to support and comfort and encourage one another. Uh, in going through this time of grief. And our thoughts and prayers, of course, are particularly with Eileen's family, her surviving siblings, uh, Kathleen and Brian, and her children, Neil, Colin, Alison, Kathleen, <coughs> Bryce, Leone, and Graham, and their families, which includes, of course, 12 grandchildren and two great-grandchildren, and thoughts with extended family as well. And uh, we come to this church building where Eileen came each week and we turn to God in our time of grieving. We will hear from the Bible, from God's word. And we're going to pray and seek the comfort that we know that God can bring. We do read in the Bible that God is the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort that we ourselves have received from God. We are agents of God's comfort to each other. But of course the greatest comfort that we receive from God is found in what Jesus said. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me will live even though they die. Please join me in prayer. Lord God Almighty, our loving Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks for the life of Eileen Word. And we ask that you will be with us uh, through this time and through this day and into the days that lie ahead. We thank you that you are the one who can turn the shadow of death into that uh, brightness of a new morning light. And so we do ask that you will comfort us in our sadness. We pray that you will fill us with your peace. Merciful Father, if there have been times when we've failed Eileen, please forgive us. And also enable us by your grace to forgive anything that Eileen has done, uh, even inadvertently, which was hurtful to us. Lord, have mercy on us and forgive our sins. We thank you that you are with us as we uh, work through this time together today. And we pray that you would uh, speak to us through your word. So, so like Eileen, we may have faith in you, trusting and relying on Jesus. May that faith be one that grows and is sustained by you. And we bring you these prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, in the midst of the sadness of this day, we can have, have confidence, uh, a confidence that Eileen had because her sure and certain hope was built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. So please stand as we sing together the first hymn in our order of service, The Solid Rock. Thank you.
the hymns and the, uh, the Bible readings that we're having today are drawn from what Eileen had chosen for, for Trevor, for her husband's funeral. So I think we can be pretty sure she would approve of them being used today. And Eileen's granddaughter Emma is going to bring us the first reading from Isaiah and it is in your service booklet. This is what the Lord says, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and when you pass through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no saviour. I declared and saved and proclaimed. I, and not some foreign God among you, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, and from ancient days I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand when I act. Who can reverse it? Well, thanks, Emma. Well, it's time now to hear something of uh, Eileen's life. And some family members are going to bring to us the eulogy and memories and tributes. And that will be followed then by a, a photographic presentation. sharing the eulogy for Mum. Uh, Mum was born on the 16th of January 1937. She was the oldest of five children of Fred and Alice Nelson. She grew up on a farm called Macfield, it was out at Maud, which is near Hay, and attended Maud Public School. Mum had recalled these things that she remembered from this early time in her life. Uh, they included fresh farm food all year round, the drought, the hand feeding of stock, dust storms, the drought, breaking rain. Uh, she remembered the war, the prisoners of war and the garrison. Uh, the Red Cross sewing bees and food parcels. Letters from her uncles, Sid and Jack, who were away at the war, and her mum sending them biscuits and fruitcakes. She also had a memory from her sister Kathleen, uh, whereas when they were very young kids, um, they fought over sitting on their dad's good leg because um, her father had come back from the war with a peg leg. And last but not least, she remembers the close-knit and extended family with many contacts with aunts and uncles and cousins from both sides of the family. This continued to be a theme that continued throughout her life as family played a very important role for her. So Mum then moved on to high school in 1949, which meant boarding away from home. She boarded at the Riverina Hostel in Hay and made many friends from this time. Mum then graduated in 1953 and went to Teachers College in Sydney, where she graduated in 1955. She then went on to teach at a number of schools in Sydney. During this time, Mum boarded with her auntie, Eva and Uncle Jack who she always said were like a second mum and dad to her. During her time at Teachers College, mum joined the local church and her faith became a pivotal force in her life. Mum became involved in church camps, youth groups and young people's activities. She attended St Mark's Yuguna where she met a nice young lay preacher called Trep. And that was that. They were engaged at the end of 1957 and then got married in May of 1958 in Sydney. They moved into their new home in Tingali, where they lived for 13 years. They started our family in 1959 and went on to have eight children. 
1971, Mum and Dad made the decision to move out of Sydney, um, again thinking of family and children, and bought the post office at Toowoomba. They enjoyed the friendship of a small rural community and being involved in the local church or churches then at the time. Mum started teaching again, um, started work at St Mary's Catholic School in West Wylam in 1975. She enjoyed her time teaching there very much and taught there for over 30 years. In 1980, the family moved to West Wylong and both mum and dad became active in the Uniting Church, as it was then. The church community over their time at West Wylong was a special part of their lives. Mum would be so happy that her life is being remembered here in this church. In 1988, I should know this because it's my grandchild, the first of 12 grandchildren were born and five years ago, the first of two great-grandchildren were born. <coughs> Dad passed away in February 1998. Mum gave up teaching to look after him during his illness. This is a very hard time for the family, but Mum, as always, was very strong. She returned to teaching part-time until she retired. Her life continued to revolve around her grandchildren and the local community and church. Mum liked to help wherever she could and was very generous with her time, including look up, looking after the grandkids for weeks at a time during holidays. Um, she was often baking, driving people to church, babysitting, catering for families driving through, um, or just available for a chat. She never spoke negatively or with hurtful words about anyone. As soon as there was the first hint of a new baby being born in the community or through the family, the knitting needles were coming up. We could probably fill this church with the amount of baby outfits she knitted over the years for family and for friends. When one of her grandchildren was heading for a, a winter holiday in the UK, four month old, she created so many outfits consisting of beanies, jumpers, overall socks, mittens and jackets. <laughs> Mum was also very sentimental and would refuse to throw things away that had any significance to her. We all remember the kitchen knife. They'd received it as a wedding present from Dad's mum, her mother-in-law. She would never stop using it. It had almost completely disintegrated the handle was worn away, the blade was very thin, but still it got used. All the new knives we bought her over the years sat on the kitchen shelf. Uh, <clears throat> my name's Leonie, I'm the youngest daughter of the first born in West Wallen. She doted on all her grandchildren and would love to, to visit and have visits from them where she was for them endlessly. One, one particular favourite memory from one of the grandkids, and I found out more than one grandchild, was that she could always rely on Grandma to have the variety of cereal packs, which included Cocoa Pops and Fruit Loops, which weren't allowed at home. <laughs> on the long drive to West Holland, there were even discussions about who would get which packet, unless, of course, Grandma bought more than one to ensure no child missed out. Mum enjoyed holidaying with all the family, from the long caravan trips to overseas adventures. One of her favourite places to visit was Katoomba, which is where Mum and Dad had their honeymoon. Mum continued to holiday there with the family over the years, bringing lots of great memories for all of us. Mum was very family focused. Every night was at the dinner table and Sunday was always a big roast after church. We were always encouraged to further our education and given the support to achieve this. Six children attending university required a lot of sacrifice. Mum set the example for us by going back to university herself to get her full degree. Mum also had a great memory. She could always report everyone's birthdays and anniversaries, not just family, but everyone. Mum meant different things to different people throughout her life. Her daughter, sister, cousin, wife, mother, teacher, friend, grandmother. Sorry for the amount of people's support and reflections we've received. She left off. <coughs> she left off. She left a lasting impression with many people, including students from her early teaching years in West Wylong. So on behalf of the family, um, we would like to really thank everyone for coming in today 
and remembering love with us. Mm. Thank, you. Thank you. Hello everybody, I'm Marlene's little brother Brian. <laughs> when Marlene was 10 years and 11 months old when I was born. So as a baby, at Maple Wood, I had little memories of Marlene, but I do know that like Marlene, all of us as a young child rode a, a bike two and a half miles to the Wood Park where she rang the bell and the pump operator would, would cross the river in a rowboat and pick up Eileen and have her siblings that might have been with her. And then row them back across the, the river. Eileen and siblings who may have been with her at the time then would walk half a mile to the, up to the Maud School. Kate tells me her memory of the uh, during the bad dust storm, Mum actually drove up in the car to pick them up because she was worried about it. <laughs> and uh, the Jones history tells me, tells us that Mum also went to the Maud School. She grew up on Yang Yang, two miles from Maud, and she walked two miles to school. She didn't have a push bike. <laughs> At Mayfield there was a toy pedal car. Eileen and Kate never wore it out, the general drivers. Three younger siblings never wore it out either. Pretty sure it's still there today. Eileen went to ride horses. On a Shetland pony named Piper, she also rode Teddy the horse. When Eileen was, was Growing up at Mopil, the only phone line was connected to the menu exchange, which operated from 9am to 9pm and a few hours on the weekend. Ollie went to, to uh, high school in Hay and boarded at the River Inn Hostel for girls. The hostel had a policy of no phone calls to the boarders, which made it hard for everyone. <coughs> History tells me that when Eileen came home from school with the measles, it seems that little brother Brian got the measles as well and ended up in hospital. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> in 1954, Eileen went to teachers' college in Sydney. I do remember lots of trips to Sydney visiting, visiting and staying with Auntie Eva and Uncle Jack, Uncle Jack and Auntie Eva, to, uh, with whom I am boarded. Ollie continued to come to Maple for holidays. I do remember she liked to walk down the river bend and sit on a log and read the Bible. As a young boy, I thought, she's doing that to get out of the washing up. <laughs> As I got older, I understood that Arlene was very devoted to her religion. Arlene had a 21st birthday party at, at Maidville, and I recall Pepper coming up to visit us at Maidville for the first time. He, uh, in, a, in, in his car, the car of a lot of memory right was an Austin A40. Pepper and Eileen married and, and brought home um, if memories are correct at Norman and Devonshire Abbey to the two and Gabby. Dad couldn't, couldn't draw that because of his eyesight, so Mum, an excellent driver, excellent at driving, learned to draw the bell more than that. And have a guy who made it. Neil was born 
and I'll be coming up at the age of 11. Following maybe several more, up to several more times. As the years went by, I and Trevor made many trips to Mayfield with the grandchildren. But Mum still continued to go to Tip to and Gary to visit them. I, my, my, uh, years of them were living with uh, the colony. In 1974, we leased off the farm at just out of Toomba uh, for four years. And over those years, I got to have no, no, no colony more than I had in a whole life before that because she was never around when I was a young person.
sharing those insights, those, those memories um, of our land. It's good to, to hear and, and good to see. And this is a day in which, of course, we give thanks for those things we've heard of and for, for much more besides. Well, we're going to hear again from God's Word, and Alice and Kate will bring us the reading from John, and then that will be followed by Amelia reading to us from Romans. that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me, that you will 
also my <laughs> where I am. Um, you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where we are going, um, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Um, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. If I live, you also will live. Peace I leave with you, my gifts I give you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not leave your hearts, do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For in the gospel the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Thank you, Alison and Kate and Amelia. Thanks for reading to us from the Bible. Um, we've heard of Eileen's love of the Bible from even as a young child. And I have the privilege of being in a Bible study group with Eileen uh, here until the time that she moved away. Towards the, uh, that time when she left, it was, it was getting a little bit harder, but it was clear that Eileen did have a real love for the Bible. Uh, she, was, she was, in a real sense, I think, a student of the Bible and quite knowledgeable about it. And not knowledgeable only in an intellectual sense. Uh, she knew that this book was the very word of God to us, uh, the main way that he reveals himself to us. And, and Eileen also lived it out. And we've heard some of that, uh, haven't we, this morning. Um, even in the past few days, I've heard comments from students from many years ago and uh, even comments coming in uh, as people walked in uh, from people at Tulimba um, and people who were at St Mary's School as teachers with her. Eileen clearly was um, a lovely lady and a, and a good teacher. With the Bible, Eileen was particularly fond of the Old Testament. It's the part of the Bible that was written before Jesus came. It's the part of the Bible which prepares us for and points us to uh, Jesus, showing our need for him. In the first part of the Bible, in that Old Testament, the focus is uh, primarily on the people of Israel. They are God's chosen people. And we heard in that first Bible reading from Isaiah that, uh, that they, as God's people, were created and formed by him. They were redeemed by him. They were brought back. Uh, they were protected, it said, by God their Saviour. But God's plan, God's purpose always extended beyond the Old Testament, beyond the people of Israel. His promise and his purpose was that redemption and salvation could come to all people. Yes, it started with the, the nation of Israel, with the Jewish people, but it would extend to, to non-Jews, to Gentiles. And that's why in that last reading from, uh, from Romans in the New Testament, Paul, one of the followers of Jesus who wrote that down, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. That word gospel there is just a word that means good news. It's good news that we can be saved, that it does that we can know salvation. And the Bible actually tells us that we all need saving because we've all fallen short, fallen short of God's glory, fallen short of God's standard. Uh, the word we talk, used when we talk about that is sin. And that can be, well, maybe it is open hostility against God. Maybe it's just ignoring the God who has made us all not living as he would have us live. Or in the words of that reading um, in the Old Testament, not knowing, not believing, not understanding that God is God. Living as though we're God and we call the shots. And so we read, no one is, no one is righteous before God. And even someone who is kind and thoughtful uh, like I am, well, we all fall short. And as a result, we actually do deserve judgment. We deserve punishment. We deserve separation from God, both now and forever. We might call that the bad news, but that's what makes the good news, the gospel, so good. It says there, as we heard in that letter to the Romans, it is that the righteousness, this is the good news, that the righteousness of God is revealed. It's a righteousness that is by faith. The good news is that, that to God, 
in his loving kindness actually came into his creation as a human, as, as Jesus. And in Jesus we see God. And we see God actually deal with the problem of our sin, taking the punishment on himself as he did when he died on the cross. He did that so sin can be paid for, so the barrier can be removed and we can be reconciled, restored, redeemed, uh, brought back into a relationship with the God who has made us, with our Creator. We've been made to have that relationship with Him. We're not righteousness. We're not righteous, but there is a righteousness, that said, that comes by faith, by our trust in Jesus, by relying on His perfect life, by relying on His death in our place. We can, as we'll sing in just a minute, we can come to the Father, to God. We can come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. But as it had in that other reading from John, uh, we must come through Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And in that song in a minute we'll sing that uh, God loved the world so much that he gave us his Son. That Jesus yielded his life, taking the punishment we deserve for our sins, so that the life cake could be opened and we could go in. We can know life with God now, in this life, but we can also know life with him forever. And that comes as we respond to what Jesus has done, that word, that word faith again. We repent, we turn to him, we rely on him, trusting in what Jesus has done. And Jesus says that's the way. To God. Jesus says that he himself is the way to God. And so how we respond to him in this life determines not only our life now, but indeed also eternity. Speaking of heaven, what did Jesus say there in the reading from John? He said, my father's house has many rooms. I'm going there to prepare a place for you and I'll come back and take you to be with me. Or as our first hymn had it, when he shall come, when Jesus shall return, when he shall come with trumpet sound, O oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. In Christ, we, well, we give him our sin. He bears the penalty for that on the cross and then he clothes us in his righteousness so we can stand before God and have the assurance of salvation and of heaven. Of course, we, we know that um, in the midst of, of turmoil, it, it makes sense when Jesus says those words we read, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. See, once we've got that, that big picture sorted out, then we know that God walks with us through the, through the ups and downs, through the, through the hard things of this life. Our first hymn, we had that refrain, On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. And, and that gives us the perspective that was in the reading from the Old Testament from Isaiah. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame now shall not consume you. God doesn't promise us in this life that we will be without hardship, that we will be without problems. It is a, a broken and fallen world after all. But the fire won't burn, it won't consume. Ultimately those things don't destroy us when our faith is in Jesus because there is something more. We've grounded on Christ the solid rock and we look forward to that with that sure and certain hope to eternity uh, with him. Those are the things that, um, that Eileen believed. She responded in faith to what God had done for her in Jesus. So, so today as we remember, as we give thanks for Eileen's life, uh, certainly there is much to treasure, isn't there, as we've heard, even in this time of sadness. But even at a time of mourning, even at a time of saying goodbyes, I know what Eileen would want me to do is to remind us all and urge us all to make that response that she had made, to actually trust in Jesus, to rely on him, so that we too can go to that place of perfection where there is no more mourning or crying or pain, where the old order of things has passed away and all things are made new. We then live our life in the light of that future, to the glory of the one who is the way, the truth and the life, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and our Lord. Amen.
Please join me in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his death in our place, which does bring us salvation as we, we put our trust in him, as we put our faith in him. We thank you for his, his resurrection, which does assure us of eternity with you. Loving God, we today give you thanks for Eileen's life. We thank you that we can be here together. We thank you for those who are connecting in with technology. Thank you for the memories that have come to mind, even as we've been sitting in here hearing other memories. We want to give you thanks for the way in which Eileen did share her life with us. We thank you that we have known her. Some of us, that's been, a, I guess, a relatively short time. For many, it's been a long time. And for quite a few of us here, it has been our whole life. And so, merciful God, we are saddened by the, by the loss, by the gap that remains for us with Eileen's death. And so we pray that you will comfort us in our sorrow, even as we comfort each other. We pray you'll be particularly with those closest to Eileen, Kathleen and Brian, Neil, Colin, Alison, Catherine, Bryce, Leone, Graham and, and their families, grandchildren, great-grandchildren extended family on, on both sides. As they, and indeed as all of us to some extent, uh, face this time of grief and loneliness, may we know that you can uphold us. May we let you uphold us. Give us the assurance of your constant care so we can uh, move forward from this point. Help us to cherish with a, a great thankfulness the, the good times that we shared with Eileen. And, and in the midst of that, may we know your peace which passes understanding. By your grace, may we face what now lies ahead for us uh, with a calm mind, indeed with a strong faith and a, and a loving heart. May we know your supporting and sustaining presence, even as we love and support one another. And we pray, God, may our present sorrow be transformed by the joy and the peace and the assurance of knowing Jesus and trusting in him, in his death for us, so that we may know life with you now. And then go to the place that Jesus has prepared for all who trust in him. May we know deep within that peace that Jesus gives. Even in our sadness, may our hearts be untroubled and may we be unafraid. We thank you for Eileen. Comfort us in our sadness, we pray, and fill us with your peace. And we bring you these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let us join together in praying the prayer that Jesus taught his followers. It's on the sheet there, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We're going to sing again the, the hymn I mentioned uh, there, uh, To God Be the Glory. At the conclusion of the hymn, please remain standing for the commendation.
truth and the life. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live, even though they die. So with our confidence, not, not in Eileen, but in Eileen's response to Jesus, let us now commend her to the love and mercy and grace of God. Lord our God, you have given us the gift of life by your creative power. And in your grace and mercy, you offer us new life in Christ. And you offer us life with you forever as we trust in him. Only you, Lord, know the heart, but firmly believing that Eileen's trust was in Jesus, we are thankful that she has entered into her rest and that she will be raised to eternal life on the last day. We humbly give thanks that you have received her into your presence because of Jesus' death and resurrection and your steadfast loving kindness and your amazing grace. Amen. We're glad you could be with us here for this time and now you are invited to the, the Wylong Cemetery and then after that to join refreshment, join for refreshments with the family. But as we go from this place, may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.